In patients who have advanced stage frontline ovarian cancer, the standard of care continues to be combination carboplatin and paclitaxel. We know that there are opportunities for us to incorporate bevacizumab as an antiangiogenic agent in the frontline setting. And there is data to support the incorporation of bevacizumab with carboplatin plus paclitaxel with respect to an improvement in progression-free survival. In this patient's clinical scenario, where she had widely metastatic disease, involvement again of the liver with suspected stage 4B disease, systemic treatment with carboplatin and paclitaxel, potentially incorporating bevacizumab would be an appropriate therapeutic option. There are different ways in which the chemotherapy can be considered. Most commonly, the carboplatin and the paclitaxel are now being given every three weeks intravenously. There was uh, obviously a period in time where there was a significant interest in intraperitoneal chemotherapy and with the results of GOG protocol 252, uh, some have gone away from the intraperitoneal approach. There was also an excitement about weekly paclitaxel in combination with every three-week carboplatin based on the Japanese GOG clinical trial. But again, based on the more recent ICON data, it suggests that the Q three-week regimen is equally effective with a reduction in treatment-related adverse events. So in a patient such as this, the every three-week regimen of carboplatin and paclitaxel with or without bevacizumab would be an appropriate intervention. Whether or not a patient would be managed with primary surgery or neoadjuvant chemotherapy depends on multiple factors specifically related to stage, disease distribution, comorbidities, whether the patient would tolerate initial extensive surgery. The common denominator is that the intent of surgery is removal of all visible disease. And that really plays a role in how we approach patients who have metastatic ovarian cancer when we make a decision about primary surgery versus neoadjuvant chemotherapy. For this patient scenario, neoadjuvant chemotherapy would have certainly been appropriate primary intervention as well, followed by interval cytoreduction. reduction. The patient case scenario that we discussed specifically e exemplified a primary resection with remaining gross residual disease. The patient had 1.3 centimeter uh, tumor of largest diameter remaining after primary resection. In patients who have a suboptimal primary cytoreduction, reduction, one consideration would be to proceed with systemic therapy and potentially consider returning to the operating room after an interval of treatment to re-explore the patient and resect tumor. We've really now more frequently gone away from that paradigm and we've proceeded with systemic chemotherapy, managing these patients, again, with a cytotoxic or targeted approaches or enrollment on clinical trial if one is open and a patient like this would be eligible for enrollment on a study such as this. But we've really began to move away from secondary cytoreductions reductions or taking these patients back after chemotherapy to re-explore because the therapeutic benefit of that intervention is unclear.